Well, hello there. Thanks for coming in, guys. Gonna do a little bit of ham radio Q and A today. Not a lot going on, on the radio. We had some pretty decent conditions earlier, but we'll uh, see what's going on. OBS ninety four. How we doing? Yeah, we didn't we didn't do anything last night. The contest was going on, and I just kind of uh, kind of let them guys have it. I was like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to steal a whole frequency from them and, you know, let them do that. I just want to let them do their thing, so. Well, good, man. I'm glad you're doing good there. You have that Worldwide DX contest going on here, and uh, we got a few changes here on my end, too. Still studying. Good, man. Good. It's all you can do right now is study and cram, 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 get in there and take the test. Uh, we've made a couple of... Well, there's one change right there. We added another switch box. <laughs> but, uh, just a little two position switch box there. And, uh, anyway, weather's still crap. Can't, uh, thanks for the follow, NASA. 10 meters is still on fire. Yeah. Nah, a little bit. But, uh,. Anyway, yeah, so uh, I was going to put another antenna up this weekend, but guess what? We got six inches of snow on the ground. I'm not getting up on the roof when there's six inches of snow. So <laughs> there's that. It's about eight degrees Fahrenheit out here, too. So, you know, there's that. We also got this guy, too. Somebody sent me that. That's awesome. Figured we put that right on the side of the amplifier there. Tuner for maximum smoke. You know, if we're going to do it, let's do it, right? Hi, hi. But uh, anyway. So... We got a couple things going to change here. There's some stuff over here you can see. Um, that stuff's all brand new in the box. We're going to be doing uh, doing some new stuff. So we'll see what happens here. Kind of curious about this guy. See how the heck that works out. That'll be interesting. But. Uh, Anyway, we had a mail call here. We still got some more stuff coming, but we got some stuff here. A couple more runs of coax. Got a pretty good deal. Not a hundred foot of two, RG two thirteen right down there. That big stuff. And then of course seventy five feet of uh, RG eight X. I kind of needed that for another little project I'm working on. So, and I'm waiting on a mount and a few other things there. You got seventy one on the practice. The formula's got you. Yeah. Well, I tell you what, man. Hello, Jim. Thanks for coming in, buddy. The uh, OBS 94, if you're getting 71 on the practice test there, my friend, you just keep it up, buddy. Uh, you're going to get there, you know. Just uh, just keep taking the test, man. Eventually, once you start averaging 90, go take that darn test, um, and you'll, you'll get them. And I had to add a couple. I had to add a QSL card down here. I've been kind of saving that spot right there for those two, for that one and that one. Um, so that one there, I don't know how much you guys been following me, um, but Whiskey Nine Alpha Victor Mike, that one right there, he actually sent me something really cool, and uh, yeah, belt stock. That's right, Jim. Um, number one, he sent me this, which is totally awesome, and I'll show you something else he sent me here, which just really made my day. And this guy, I talked to him on the radio a couple weeks ago. And uh, he sent me this also, and he told me that he'd made this contact. Let me I'm setting this down here. Anyway, so he told me about this contact. I was he was looking at my QRZ page, and he says, "Man, he says I think that uh, I might have contacted your your step step grandfather at one point. Let me look through my stuff." Later on that evening, he got a hold of me on the radio, and by golly, now I got this in the mail the other day. This is a copy of his log, but from 1982, January. Uh, this one in particular is January 9th, 1982. And there's the call sign right there. That was my Elmer. That's the person who got me into ham radio right there. So that was Ron. Uh, Kilo Bravo 7 CR Oscar. That was my step-grandfather. Apparently this gentleman had him on 75 meters. Uh, he was on 3.935 sideband. He got him at a 5 and 8 at 757 UTC out of Salem, Oregon. And that's where Ron was from, and that's why he got introduced to ham radio. It was at that same QTH that, that uh, Ron was talking to this gentleman at. 
So I talked on that same station. But uh, anyway, interesting stuff. So that was really cool. And that's why he got a special spot on the wall right there. That's uh, both of those cards are his, by the way. So anyway, there you go. That's uh, that's awesome. That one made, uh, almost made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. That was just really cool because I'd never talked to anybody who had um, confirmed a contact with him before. So anyway, that's uh, that was totally awesome. And he sent me a couple other cool things too in the envelope as well. So that was uh, that was a lot of fun opening that one. Um, uh, that's a great story. Thanks, man. Order a pizza. I can't just order pizza. That's the problem out here. I live out here in the middle of nowhere there, my friend. And uh, yeah, I, I can order it, but I'd have to drive 30 miles to get it. <laughs> also, we got this. This is cool, too. Somebody sent me this. He might be in here. Is he in here? He might be. I don't know. Somebody sent me that little pod activation uh, in Fed. Or you could use it for anything, I guess. Like low power. Um, he said you can run up to like 50 watts through it, I think. Just an in Fed wire antenna. Totally cool. Homemade stuff. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work this. I think my next ham meeting, I think we're doing... Um, I think we're doing, uh, we're going to actually activate, we got the news coming for our next hand meeting, so we're going to be in Giant Springs State Park in uh, Great Falls, Montana, for the next hand meeting here this month. And I might take this out there and hook her up and activate it and do another video on it, so that'll be awesome. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, so the news wants to do a story on the ham club, I guess, so we're kind of going to be involved in that. Uh, you're currently working on a CW Tesla coil. It's close to 500 watts at 315 kilohertz. The FCC find me. Doubtful. <laughs> uh, you also ran packet on two meters. You live close to W1AW. So you must be in Connecticut then, huh, TJ? Somewhere in that neck of the woods. Right on. Well... Anyway, so what I'm kind of doing here, anybody that's new to what I'm, well, to this particular live, I kind of sit down here on uh, on Sundays, I answer questions, if anybody has any questions or just wants to see more of my setup, or maybe you guys have questions about current things I'm going to be doing here, um, maybe regarding that pile of stuff over there, you know, who knows, I mean, just whatever, <laughs> soft finger on the government, yeah. Yep, that's about right. Anyway, I actually did kind of clean up the shack this morning a little bit. I kind of picked some stuff up and emptied my my trash box there, which was just water bottles, mostly. A couple of adult beverage cans, mostly water bottles. But, uh, you want to get an HF dipole wire antenna? Yeah. Yep, that's the way to do it. Wire antennas, man, they work good. I've got a dipole out there. Uh, oh, you want to see the map, Jim? There's the map. There's the big map. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, dipoles work really well. I've got them uh, built out of wire and built out of aluminum as well. So, yeah, there's kind of my boxes. I save some of those boxes here because once in a while I sell something or give something away and I have to send it out. In fact, I need to get down to the post office, too, there for you, Jim, at some point. Yeah, your neighbor had a huge antenna in the backyard. He's always trying to see how far he can contact. Yeah, I made some pretty good contacts yesterday and this morning. Um, I made quite a few, actually. I got about a dozen new countries that I didn't have, so that's pretty cool. You want an off-center fed? Yeah, that's, that's what this... Well, this thing's an in-fed, I guess. But, yeah, off-center feds work. I've built off-center feds as well. Uh, they work pretty well. But I think a lot of people like the in-fed stuff. I've over here, I've never even used one. But I've heard nothing but good about in-fed dipoles. So, I don't know. We're going to play with it and see what the heck happens. I may end up sticking one up here in the, at the house, too. I don't know. Uh, as soon as the weather actually gets decent around here, which... Yeah, I don't know when that's going to be. But, uh... At some point here, it will. And then we're going to start putting some more stuff up in the air. Hello, HD Joe. 
Thanks for coming in, guys. Appreciate the likes, and follows, all the good stuff there. I'm surprised nobody's asked about that stuff yet. You know, if anybody wants to know what the heck's going on over here. Know, there's like 40 of you guys in here. I figured somebody would be like, well, what are you doing with all that crap? Those are just boxes. That's, you know, that SP-23 is that, and uh, the IC-7300 is that, and there's other miscellaneous things there, and speakers, and... But uh, thanks for the follow there, Jamie. Anyway, I'll just talk about it. What the heck? So, ATOS 120 Alpha. That bugger right there. I have a buddy. Kilo Echo 8 Whiskey Lima Whiskey. And, uh, yeah, thanks, Jim. Appreciate that, buddy. <laughs> uh, anyway, he runs one of those in the 18-wheeler, and it's really good. I've always wanted a screwdriver antenna, so I said, heck with that, pull the trigger on it. And, uh... So, you know, I, I figured if I'm going to do that, I might as well just get, I'm not really a Yesu guy, but I figured, heck with it, we're going to get an 891 and throw in the pickup as well. I'll take that IC7000 out of there. And, uh, you know, just because it, it's, it's uh, coherent or whatever you want to call it with this antenna, that's the only reason I did it. That's only Yesu HF rig I've ever owned. Probably the only one I will own, but anyway, just something to play with there. And then I thought, well, you know, that if I get rid of the 7,000, then I don't have 2 meters or 70 centimeters in the pickup anymore. So, well, we had to get one of those. So now I'm going to have two different, two different radios in the pickup. You can't hide money. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't have any money. I, I'm just saying, I, I just, you know, have stuff. And I just got me another speaker. Probably didn't need the speaker, but I thought, well, you know, I just needed it. I mean get a new icom radio you might as well get a new icom speaker i mean what the heck i already have one but you know i mean you can't ever have too many speakers i mean i got speakers there and speakers there and i got another motorola speaker upstairs and probably six or eight more speakers in boxes around here somewhere but <laughs> yeah but uh no i know i buddy yeah so what happened, and I'll tell you the reason that this whole thing started, just to be completely honest with you. So my wife kind of got in this kit where she wanted to do uh, do redo our bedroom. So we took everything down. Now we're going to start doing, redoing parts of the house too here uh, as far as like decorating goes. So I said, yeah, I don't care. You do you. Good deal. We're going to create a TikTok page for it, which we did. It's called the Pages Review. And we've got like one video up or two videos up, but we're just kind of getting rolling with it. We need to get a thousand followers so we can start doing lives and stuff. But uh, we're going to do some unboxing and stuff. Anyway, long story short, you know, I says, well, gosh, you know, you spent this much money on uh, on uh, all this stuff. And she looked at me. She said, doesn't your phone have ham radio outlet saved on the, on the browser? And I went, huh. <laughs> And I took that as permission, so anyway, there's that. <laughs> That's what we got. But uh, anyway, how good are all modes? Well, I don't really understand the question there. Um, but yeah, that's all modes. That's that's everything right there. That's I guess I won't have two meter sideband or seventy centimeter sideband anymore. Not that I ever use that anyway, but I won't have that with the fifty one hundred. I've never played with the 5100, so I have no idea. Hey, Koke, Charlie Echo 3, Quebec Yankee. How we doing there, my friend? You get in on that DX contest? I know I did, a little bit. Yeah, Kilo Quebec 4, Golf Delta Bravo. Yeah, I heard 10 meters was rocking. I don't have a 10-meter antenna up. But I've been playing on 20 this morning, and now conditions are crap, so I don't know. Uh, let's see, where's a good place to get starter info? How do you get started in ham radio? Well, the best place to do it, uh, hamradioprep.com. Wow, I got like tremendous amounts of noise all of a sudden. I don't know where the heck that came from. Anyway, surprise. But <laughs> uh, hamradioprep.com is a good one. Uh, YouTube University, man, that's a really good place to go out there and do it. You can also get the Gordon West books. Um, you know, you can do stuff like that, too. Just study, study. Uh, you can go to ARRL.org, and you can find a club near you. Get with the club. Usually, they're pretty good about it. I know my club. You know, I'm actually a volunteer examiner myself. Um, so we uh, we do 
we do tests once a month and uh, we try to make it like Saturday mornings convenient for people there so uh, you know we there there's definitely resources but you got to study to at least get your technician license if you want to play ham radio legally and um, you know the learning doesn't really stop until uh, or it doesn't really start I should say and you know until you actually get your license and start playing with it so that's kind of the deal oh yeah and then this we need to touch on that too Rest in peace, Mr. Heil. Bob Heil died here pretty recently. Run one of his microphones right there. PR781, one of his uh, most infamous microphones there next to the PR40. But uh, that's a sad thing. Been around amateur radio for a lot of years. Influenced a lot of people um, in a positive way, including uh, musicians and people of the sorts there. Uh, thanks for the share. Uh, let's see here. Mark K, you were also on 10 meters. Let's see. Loved Radio Shack back in the day. Look who's talking. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I love Radio Shack too. Uh, good mobile radio? Well, it depends. What are you looking to do there, uh, Chris? Depends what you're looking to do, man. I mean,. I mean, it's a loaded question there, buddy. It, you could be, if you want to do HF or you're looking to do 2 meters, 70 centimeters, I mean, whatever you're looking to do, man. But I got a lot of, I could recommend a lot of different things. But I would all, my biggest recommendation for anybody that's looking for a radio is the best radio that you like the best that's in your budget. That's, that's my best recommendation. And you kind of go from there because until you play with a number of radios throughout the years, you don't really know what you like and what you don't like. Um, I honestly, I like Kenwood for UHF and VHF. I just do. I don't know why, but I'm going to run with an ICOM this time just because I like ICOMs also. It is what it is. We're going to play with it. And that thing's got a humongous screen too, and it looks cool, and it's got D-Star, and it's got GPS and the whole gamut. So, you know, there's that. You're welcome, buddy. No problem. You're an advanced class. Right on. So if you're an advanced class... Uh, you should be able to upgrade without actually testing. Just throwing that out there. There's a certain date. Um, I can't remember what the date is, but there's a certain date that if you were in advance before this date, I believe you can upgrade for free without even testing. All you got to do is just bring your FRN number in to a VE session, and we just fill out the paperwork and send it off. Just throwing it out there. 20 meters is wide open right now. Nope, not on my end, it's not. There's 20 meters on my end right here. Let me open, let me make this a little bit bigger and get this thing out of the way. I I made some pretty good contacts on 20 earlier, Rob. Um, and it was open up pretty good. Now it's kind of, eh. I mean, there's some stuff going, but... I mean, there's definitely some stuff going. Yeah, I don't have a 10-meter antenna up. We can go to 10 meters, though. I don't care if I can get it there. There we go. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some 10-meter action going on. Um, yeah, your, expire, your, your license expired last April. Um, Two-year grace period on it. It's two years, so get on it, man. Get in there on the ULS. Hello, Ben. Thank you for the follow. Um, get on the ULS. You should be able to renew it. They're probably going to charge you 35 bucks for a license fee, but that's all right. But yeah, I do believe you have two-year grace period. I'm pretty sure, unless they changed it on me recently. But um, yeah. So this is one thing. I'm trying to get an antenna up for this. Um, I can't. I tried to do it last weekend. We had like 40, 50 mile an hour winds. I wasn't getting up on the roof. And I was going to do it this weekend, but now we have six inches of snow. And uh, so, yeah, I still don't have a 10 meter antenna. <laughs> uh, FL Medic, you need to get your ham license. Yeah, do it, buddy. Just do it, man. It's not really that hard. I mean, you know, kind of, sort of, in a way, but kind of, not really. Especially if you just want a technician license. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, Clint, hello. Thanks for coming in there, my friend. 
Thanks for being there. Where do you have snow? On the ground and on my roof. No, I'm just kidding. I'm in central Montana. I'm out here in the town that holds your pants up called Belt. Belt, Montana. Almost center of the state here. Yeah, weather off the west coast is causing some issues, I'm sure. I know you guys had some snow, too, which is odd over there. Uh, no, I don't play with FT8. I probably could. I just... I've just never got into it. Um, I like a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know, a little bit of that. But no, I've never really got into FT8. I don't know why. I probably should. I probably should get another laptop and just specifically use it for radio and set it up here in the, in the shack. Because this radio here is plug and play for digital. I could download FL Digi or something and just rock and roll with it. But, you know, just haven't done it. I'm just not, uh, not really that guy. So it is what it is. I don't care what anybody does, you know. I just need to do it. Uh, you're a ham. Kilo Delta 6 Romeo Echo Lima for over 30 years. You need to upgrade. Don't know how. Well, um, if you uh, need an upgrade, you should probably get with your local club and figure out a test session. That would be what I would do. Um, ARRL.org, you know, or talk to some local hams on the air. You need to upgrade or renew. I'm not sure which, but if you just got to upgrade, you know, that that's easy peasy. Uh, Michigan has 54 degrees. I think we're currently about somewhere between 8 and 10 degrees above zero outside right now. Clint, you're in Dallas, Texas. Right on, buddy. Thanks for being here. Reno's getting snow. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, Clint, Kilo India 5, Zulu India Foxtrot. Right on, buddy. I am Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra out here in Belt, Montana. And just remember, when you're tuning the amps, you know, that's according to, uh, Whiskey 9 Alpha Victor Mike anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't I don't I don't tune for maximum smoke. I just just throwing that out there. I just don't, but it's it's kind of cool to I thought it was a cool little thing there, so I, I put it on the side of the amp. Just because. But uh 60 in Wisconsin. Oh man. Here Kilo Charlie 5 Lima Tango Golf on 14253. I was almost on 14253. Who are you talking to? Kilo Delta 5, Zulu Mike Charlie, 73 there, my friend. Uh, no, I don't need a tuner with it. I, I don't like to run non resonant antennas if I can help it. I do have a couple of tuners, I have multiple tuners. Um, so if you want to see it, thanks, Jim, for the likes. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. So I do have a tuner in line with this radio right here, a couple of them. I actually do have um, this tuner right here in line, and it's in between that radio and that amplifier. Uh, reason being is because that amplifier does not have a tuned input, and if I don't have a tuner between it, then uh, my radio is not a happy camper. So anyway, uh, Steven, my QTH, I am in Belt, Montana, out here in the center part of the state there, my friend. And uh, anyway, so I have that tuner right there. General class ham radio study guide. Yep, uh, Gordon West books, ARRL books. Best way to go, man. Or just, like I said, ham radio prep, apps, whatever, anything. But yeah, get your general, get on HF, man. Anyway, so we got that tuner right there between that radio and that amp. Again, because that amplifier does not have a tuned input. I have this big old tuner down here, this big old roller inductor. 73 from New York there, thank you sir. 73 from uh, Belt, Montana. I am Whiskey 7, Tango, Victor, Sierra. And uh, anyway, that's not hooked up. It just looks cool, and it matches the Clipperton. So that's, <laughs> that's why I have it. But that thing works really well, actually. You can like, tune a fence post with it. It's pretty awesome. Um, I also have this tuner over here. This auto tuner that I actually have hooked up between... This amplifier and that switch box right there. But all I really use it for is um, I monitor my output power and I monitor my SWR. That's pretty much all I do with it. As you can see, it is in the bypass mode, and that's pretty much where it stays. Uh, AI7RS 
how much power do you run when calling CQ? When I'm actually running the pileups, um, I run about four or five hundred watts. When I'm trying to break a pile up, like with this DX contest thing that was going on, I run about a kilowatt. Um, I actually had it up to about 1.2 kilowatts this morning because I was getting frustrated. <laughs> but typically speaking, about 500 when I'm running the pile up and trying to break a pile up, I'm uh, running about a kW. So, typically speaking. Thank you there, JR. I appreciate that, sir. We got other stuff going here, too. There's my big old rack mount supply that I've been using forever. Like I said, I added another switch box here. And the reason I added that, uh, that's actually for on the 2-meter side. So, I like these these Alpha Delta, um, what would be, yeah, yesterday was crazy for sure. Anthony, what would be 500? I'm not following you there, my friend. Anyway, I love these Alpha Delta switch boxes. Uh, I have this Delta 4 here. I have another Delta 4 in uh, my pickup also because I have multiple HF antennas on top of the truck which we're going to be getting rid of that and put that ATOS on there and just going with one antenna. So changing that all up, which we'll get there eventually after the snow melts and the weather gets warmer. And then, like I said, I have this. This one's all for HF. Um, and then this one here is for 2 meters. And I only have one 2 meter antenna up here, 2 meter 70 centimeter antenna up. But the reason I have these on a switch box is because all I have to do is go chunk, and now I'm on ground. And we have a lot of lightning out here. Um, in the spring and the fall. So when I leave the shack, I make sure that everything's centered on those. They actually have surge protectors built into them. So that's the input that goes into the radio on the center of these. That's like the radio that goes into it. And then these are the antennas. Those are the antenna ports. So same deal. Input, antenna, and antenna port. Um, anyway, they work really good. So, I like them, and I want to get more of them, and I probably will eventually. Uh, let's see here, Clint. What kind of ham radio? Well, that's which one? I mean, there's a Kenwood V71 Alpha. There's an ICOM IC7300. There's an ICOM ID5100A. There's a Yaesu FT891. I got like four different bowfangs up there. I got other random bowfangs laying around the house. Um, I've got an ICOM IC7000 in the pickup. I've got other radios, too, around here somewhere. Um, let's see here. Thanks for the follow, JR. I appreciate that. 1,500-watt uh, power limit, meaning 500 watts if you transmit on AM. Nope, 1,500 watts, any band, any mode. Well, almost. If 60 meters is channelized, I think you're only allowed like 30 watts or something. Uh, but typically speaking, 1,500 watts, any mode, almost on any frequency. Um, yes, I am an extra class. Oh, do I have an extra ham radio? Well, I, I got lots of ham radios. But uh, no, so, I mean, I can run 1,500. Anthony, I can run 1,500 watts on AM if I wanted to. Um, I don't know if I'd want to push that amplifier that hard, but I guess it would probably do it if I really pushed it, but... You, you can run it. It's legal. Hello, Joey. Uh, Kilo Bravo 3, Lima Uniform Echo, Whiskey 7, Tango Victor Sierra out here in Belt, Montana. Um, hello, sir. I like the call sign. That's kind of cool. K Blue. Uh, yeah, I, I do have lots of ham radios. I got lots of ham radio stuff, too. <laughs> lots of it. But I've been doing this for like 30 years, too. So, you know, there's that. I've gotten rid of a lot of it, too. Uh, do I have an 857 or 706 Mark II G? I don't have either one of those rigs. But if I did, I would probably be willing to get rid of the 857D, maybe. But I don't have either of those rigs anymore. I had an 857D one point in time. And I had an issue. Um, I sent it into Yesu. They fixed the issue. The issue came back. And I sold it to one of my buddies for a good deal, and I'm pretty sure that he fixed it. I think he's still using it. That was a lot of years ago. Yeah, no problem, Anthony. Any time there, my friend. Um, well, I mean, so you might need a tuner with an in-fed antenna. It just depends where you want to talk and where it's resonant at. Um, sometimes you do, you know. 
And the 7300 actually has a built-in tuner as well. Like, I probably don't need that tuner, to be honest with you. I just had it, so I'm like, well, heck with it. Let's hook it up. <laughs> you know? But, uh... You ran a Kenwood 940 and a Yaesu 101. Right on. Well, both good rigs. Uh, they might pass a bill. What kind of bill are we talking about? I ain't heard nothing about no ham radio bill, but I don't know. Kilo Echo 4, Mike Uniform Romeo. Hello, this is Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra out here in Belt, Montana. So I also don't watch the news. So what uh, what bill are we talking about? Are we talking about like something where they're trying to ban ham radio or something? Like you guys are freaking me out, man. <laughs> Well, Anthony, uh, if you're using 10 meters, how far would 100 watts between mobile to mobile simplex go? That's a loaded question, man. There's a lot of variables to that. Um, realistically, I mean, if you're flat, if you're completely flat space, like you can still see the antenna. I mean, you could go hundreds and hundreds of miles, technically, if you're up above them and you can still see it, line of sight. Um, if if you got mountains in the way, so for instance, if you're sitting in your mobile and you got 100 watts and you're running, we'll just call it a 102 inch whip, which is roughly a quarter wave on 10 meters, um, and you're down here in the town of Belt where I live, and you got a guy that's, you know, 20 miles away over in Monarch on the other side of the mountain, you're probably not going to be able to talk to him. Um, so it, it just depends. There's a lot of uh, a lot of variables to that, man. Oh, the oh the HOA, th oh it's the HOA thing. Okay, yeah, I don't know anything about that. I don't. I live in an HOA, man. I just kind of do whatever over here. Yeah, I didn't know there was an HOA bill. Thanks for let me know that though. Yeah, the nine forty built-in tuner, absolutely. Yeah, you're Mobile, Alabama, right on, man. Yeah, there is a thing with HOA and antennas. I know that they get all cranky about it, but you know the thing is, is that's uh. That's kind of, you sign up for that when you move into an HOA. You sign the paperwork and you pay the dues and you voluntarily, you know, sign up for that. So, eh, is what it is. As a ham operator, I'm probably not hoity-toity enough or, I shouldn't say that. That's that's not proper. That's not really what I meant by that. Uh, I'm not, I don't like living close to people. I'll just put it that way. Um, so, I, I, uh. I probably would never live in an HOA. I mean, I suppose maybe, but I, I don't know. The one thing I will say about an HOA, like I, one of the, my buddies in the ham club, he lives in an apartment, and he can't do an awful lot. He can do it on the weekends when his manager's not around. He can throw up an antenna. Um, and I think they should let him string up a wire, but they say absolutely not if they're going to kick him out. And I think it's just crazy, but what do I know? As a matter of fact, I might let him use this, too. If he's at the next club meeting, I might actually say, here, why don't you take this home and just string it up the tree out there outside your back window and uh, play with it for a little while and see what happens. But uh, after I make a video, play with it myself, of course. But... Uh, Let's see here. Yeah, th no problem, buddy. Anytime, Anthony. Hopefully I'm not too blunt for you or anything. But uh, I appreciate the follows there, guys. And, yeah, they should loosen the restrictions on the HOA stuff. Uh, Jim, I, I think you do need to check with your HOA. I think you might have too many antennas up out there. They might have something to say about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I checked with my HOA once. It was It was highly overrated. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's in Congress. Don't buy, don't buy, don't buy it on Amazon. Whatever you're trying to buy, I mean, if you're trying to buy an antenna or something like that, you can get it cheaper elsewhere. Almost, almost ninety-five percent of the time, guaranteed. Bill Bishop, thank you for the follow. You have old ham equipment. What do you do with it? Well, I know what I would do with old ham equipment. I would probably hook it up and run it. That's probably what I would do. Yeah, you can tune up balcony rails. Um, I've tuned up... So I used to have a tuner that was pretty similar to this. It was a... Um, oh, well. 
I can't even remember what the heck it was now. I can picture the darn thing. Anyway, it was real similar to this. It was an older tuner. In fact, it was my, my step-grandfather's uh, KB7SO who got me into this. And uh, Anyway, just a different brand. Same deal, same era. But, uh, yeah, I've tuned up a window screen, literally, on 10 meters with a tuner just like that. Literally just like a little window screen. Like a, what, 3 foot by 4 foot, whatever, metal window screen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, you can tune up your rain gutters. You can tune up your downspouts. That's the other thing I keep telling my buddy who lives in an apartment. He's a general, and uh, he's got a little Zygu HF rig and and uh, a little battery operator one. And I keep telling him, I'm like, dude, you you have um, you have a big downspout. You live in a three story apartment building. You're on the on the bottom floor, right outside of your back door, is a downspout it goes all the way to the roof. Tune it up. <laughs> told him i'll loan you a tuner just you know. he don't want to get in trouble and i don't blame him uh william if you have no interest in it and you have that radio your best bet if you were trying to sell it or something of that nature um what i would do if if you're unsure of maybe um what it's worth or functionality of it i would probably get with a local ham club and um and just see, you know, see if they can help you out with it. Maybe hook some of it up. Maybe sell it for you. You know, whatever. Um, that's probably what I would do. Uh, yeah, tune the aluminum gutter. Exactly. How would you tune a rain gutter in your house? Well, you'd have to separate them one way or the other. Like, if you had a gutter going, it doesn't matter. Even if it's just going down one side. You take, you take your coax, split it. Hot to one side, ground to the other. Tune her up, buddy. That's it. That simple. It is that easy. Yep, they wouldn't even know. And that's what I told them, too. I, I said, they wouldn't even know. You just take a little little tiny piece of RG58 coax or something and stick down there by the ground. And I said, bury it in the dirt right there that's about a foot from your concrete. And uh, and just just run it right up the wall behind the thing. I said, they never even see it. Throw a little tiny self-tapping screw. They never even know. Like, I've looked at it, and he's like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble. And I was like, yeah, I get it, you know. He doesn't want to get kicked out. He's a veteran. He's on fixed income. I get it, but, man, I would. Yeah, it's a metal one. That's the thing. It's an aluminum one. And I'm like, man, that, that's your antenna right there. So, <laughs> I told him about the HOA buster, too, Jimmy. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, William, how you would find your local club in Michigan, I would probably go to ARRL.org and look up into your local radio clubs. There's a spot on there somewhere on the page that you can find your club. You can usually enter your zip code. And uh, you enter that zip code there, and it'll bring up any clubs. And then I think you can set the radius, you know, 50 miles, 100 miles, what the heck ever. Um Ham radio emergency. Yeah, there you go. That's the other thing I told him. I said, uh, I said, why don't you just, uh, why don't you just tell him you're part of emergency comms for Great Falls? Like, you know, you just have to listen. You have to be able to listen only. I mean, that's what I'd tell him. But you know what do I know? I, I don't know. It is what it is. But uh, yeah, you got RG one seventy four. There you go. See, that's little tiny coax. That's teeny tiny stuff, and it works fine. Yeah, tell them you're part of Skywarn. Max, thanks for the uh, thanks for the follow. Kilo Charlie Nine, Mike India Juliet out of Panama City, Florida. Uh, I am Whiskey Seven Tango Victor Sierra out here in Belt, Montana. There's my big old giant wall map back there. So yeah, we were making some pretty good contacts this morning. Uh, we were getting all the way. Let's see, we were getting all the way over here into this section. Let's see, where was one? There was one. What the heck was it? Let's see. I think we got into Serbia today. We got into Bosnia. I know we got into Croatia yesterday. We got into Hungary. Uh, let's see. Where else? And there was one up north here, too. So I remember coming over here and looking at the map. Where was it? I don't remember. There was some... Where... Oh, it was Finland. That's what it was. I got into Finland this morning, too, on 20 meters. I don't know where in Finland. I have to look that up again, but... So northern part of uh, Europe there. So yeah, there's some pretty good conditions going on this morning here on 20 anyway. 
having a good time. I didn't get an awful lot down into Africa or anything, but a couple of videos back, if you guys go look, I did get into some stuff over here in the Middle East on 10 meters in my pickup uh, with like 100 watts. Probably wasn't even doing 100 watts. I was on my lunch break and it was probably, didn't even have my truck started. So it was probably doing like 50, 75 watts maybe. Getting over in the Middle East on 10 meters in the middle of the day. That was pretty cool. And I think that was on Friday. That was just like the beginning of the of the darn uh, thing going on there. Uh, to have a runner, I'm going to try out that fence behind my place. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. Uh, I know that fence will work. Just tune it up. That's all you got to do. Tune her up. And, you know, I'll be honest, man. You can get these roller inductor tuners like this, these old ones. And, I mean, you open this thing up. It looks like it's brand spanking new inside. I mean, this thing, this will handle like three kilowatts. And like I said, it'll literally tune a fence post. You can pick these up for like 150 bucks. I think I paid 100 bucks for this one. Shipped to my door. And I bought it off of QRZ. And I couldn't pass it up because, well, you know, the Clipper to know. I, it just matched, so I had to buy it. But uh, thanks, buddy, for the awesome map. Right on. Uh, just Junkyard Radio. Belt stock. Belt stock 2024, that's coming up. Yep, coming up in August. We're going to be talking a little more about that as time goes by here. That gets a little bit closer also. That's going to be pretty cool. Uh, give it permission to hook up a weather station and attach the antenna to it. That's a good idea. I should talk to him about that, JR. I didn't think about that. Maybe I might have to text him about that one. That's a, that's a good idea. Yeah, Ireland was coming. I got into Ireland today, too. I think I got two different... Or no, it was yesterday. I got into two different Ireland stations. I got into Wales. Um, yeah, I talk to Mud Duck all the time. Yep, he's my buddy. Hi, hi. <laughs> uh, Popcorn913. Hello there, sir. James Floyd, thank you for the follow. Yeah, JR, that's a really good idea, man. I didn't think about that, but... Um, yeah, good idea. I'm going to bring that up. In fact, I might even have a weather station around here somewhere that he could probably have. So, maybe if he can get the okay with that, I'll say, well, here's your weather station. Now, string up a wire. <laughs> anyway, I just keep scrolling around with all this. You see what, Matt? Uh, you're actually watching my live? What are you looking at? There he is, right there. Matt K7OWW, look at that. <laughs> my buddy out of Eugene, Oregon. Yeah, your card with your car on it, sir. Just throwing that out there. Thanks for coming in. Last responder, good morning there, sir. Good afternoon, where I'm at. How about Hotspot Ham Radio? I don't know. I don't play with that. You know who you talk to about that is K7OWW. He knows all about it. You want to talk about FT8, he's like the FT8 master. He's in the live right now. Just throwing that out there. But, uh... Thanks for the shares, Jim. I appreciate that. You were born in Eugene, huh? Right on. That's where Matt is. Um, I'm in Belt, Montana. Hello from Kilo Bravo Zero, Romeo Hotel Alpha. This is Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra out here in the town that holds your pants up called Belt. Yeah, I actually have a hot spot. Um, I'm too dumb to set it up. I don't know what I'm doing, so... Yeah, that's kind of the deal. These are kind of these are a couple of my Oregon buddies. Both of these guys right here. I know Jeremy really well. I've known him for a lot of years. Known Matt for a lot of years. In fact, that old K seven O W W. I think he's still running an antenna I gave him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, you've only been as far east as Missoula. Uh, that's all good. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely east of Missoula. I'm on the other side of the of the Rockies. Yes, I do have a YouTube channel. It's in my uh, bio up there. If you want to know what my YouTube is, you can definitely check it out. It's my call sign and my name. So it's uh, W7TVS Travis, all one word, all capital letters. Um, it's there, easy to find, man. It's in my bio. You can see it. I've got probably 90 some odd videos up. Um, it's basically all ham radio. There may or may not be a couple of videos of some barbecue stuff on there. You know, barbecue and some steaks and burgers and such. But for the most part, it's ham radio. So. <laughs> oh, you want okay? So the the, the call the uh, I think you're talking about. 
I bet you had the best cook. No, I am the best cook. No, I'm not. But I know how to barbecue. Um, Jim, you're saying again, again. Okay, so the call, my call sign is W7TVS, Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra. So my my handle on YouTube, if you want to find it, is my call sign and my name. So there's my call sign, W7TVS. And then my name, Travis, T-R-A-V-I-S, Tango Romeo Alpha Victor India Sierra. So Whiskey 7, Tango Victor Sierra, Tango Romeo Alpha Victor India Sierra. All one word, all capital letters. W7TVS Travis on YouTube. You'll find it all day long. Easy peasy. Just Kurt Bear, thank you for the follow. Yeah, we have fun cooking out here when it's not a uh, gym. <laughs> uh... Uh, Whiskey Delta 8 Delta X-Ray. Yes, sir. How we doing, buddy? Thanks for coming in. Last responder. I appreciate you. Yeah, ham radio people on TikTok. I'm telling you. Well, you know, we got to get it out there somehow. And honestly, I believe a lot of this is an educational type of deal. And uh, this, honestly, I've brought people into ham radio because of TikTok and YouTube. That's why I keep doing it. I love it. As a VE, I just think it's great. Um, Kilo One Hotel Fox Zulu in Connecticut. Hello there, sir. This is Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra out here in the town that holds your pants up called Belt in Montana. Thanks for sharing the live, Clint. I appreciate that there, buddy. Let's just keep it rolling, man. So this is what I kind of do on my Sundays. I just kind of come in here. Thanks for the thumbs up, Jeff. Appreciate you there, buddy. I just kind of come in here and mess around. Oh, yeah. We're going to be doing this, too. So I remember earlier mentioning, but I've got all these switches, okay? So I've got another one of these in my pickup, like I mentioned earlier. I'm going to be pulling that out of my pickup. Now, again, reason being, we have a lot of lightning, okay? That's why, why I run these things, because they have a ground on them. Bloop, go down to just, you know, keep the crap away from the radios. So I'm going to be putting a couple of these bad boys in the pickup. Because we're going to be going to... Let me set that one down. So we're going to be putting one of these in. Two of these, actually. I've got two of these. I think I've got three or four of them, but anyway. Um, so, it's either that or spend a little more money and get a couple of those, which I might do. I don't know. I've still got a month or so before I get this stuff set up. Anyway, we're going to be going down to one antenna in the pickup, just a screwdriver. And, uh, and then, of course, that radio, but then we have to add another radio, too. So, we need everything to be able to get away from direct, you know, close lightning to the antennas. So, anyway, we're going to be running a couple of these. So, they'll both be probably in the up position. Do it one hand. Yeah, I'm in my jammies. Yep, that's right. It's Sunday. Anyway, bink. Okay, we're hot. We're ready to rock. You know, oh, we're, we're turning everything off, and now we're going to go right to there. To where there's nothing. So, anyway, that saves radios, which saves money. So, we're going to be doing that. Got a couple of those sitting there. Um, foot pedals. You can't forget about the foot pedals. Yeah, lightning can really mess up your life. Jim, they are pretty awesome. Absolutely, my friend. Anytime. Well, if I have SWR issues with that switch, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen with it. I'm going to take it out of my pickup, and I'm going to... Um, well, it's going to go away. We'll just say that. Anyway... <laughs> So we're going to talk about these switches for a minute. This little guy right here keys up this radio. Yeah, I, I kerchunked a repeater. Shame on me. And this this foot pedal right here, that keys up that radio and that amp at the same time. Well, they have it not operate. See? And that's how that works. And you can hear me talking there. Yeah, modulate the microphone. Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra. But uh, anyway, yeah, that thing will go away. Uh, we've worked before. Kilo Bravo Zero Romeo Hotel Alpha. You like my saying. So you mean the saying where uh, I live in the town that holds your pants up called Belt? <laughs> I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, there you go, man. And... Thanks for the follow, buddy. Yeah, and you love your ATOS 120A. I tell you what, man. Um, I just... <sighs> honestly, and I'm going to dog on them a little bit. I, I probably shouldn't, but I'm going to. The Shark Stick Minis, I, I really liked them at first. Um, so I started out with a 10-meter one and a 40-meter... Or a 10-meter... No, excuse me. A 75-meter Shark Stick Mini. 
and a 20 meter one. Okay, everything was cool. And about three months later, all of a sudden, the 75 meter one wasn't working right anymore. And I was like, what the heck? And I pulled it off, and I'm, it's like chunk, 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 chunk inside. It's broke. And I'm like, okay, whatever. It's pretty tall. That's cool. It's on top of the pickup. I run the highways all the time. It's like 30 miles one way to work, whatever. Okay. So I took it off, said heck with it, threw a 40 meter one on there. And I have a bunch of them. And, uh, and I still have my 20 meter one on there. So now my 20 meter one all of a sudden does the same thing. Doesn't work anymore. Less than a year. Um, so now I have a 10 meter one on there and a 40 meter one. Um, <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Anyway, I got getting tired of it and I'm just going to go to one antenna and I'm just going to run the screwdriver. And I know people that have had really good luck with these ATOSs. So I said, heck with it. That's what I'm going to roll with. And we're going to play with it. So that's going to be the new setup. And we'll get more into that as it starts happening, as we start getting everything set up in the truck. Um, it's going to take a little while because I said there's six inches of snow on the ground. So, you know, uh, do you know... I, Jason, on YouTube. Uh, I don't know. I don't know who I, Jason, is, but maybe I might have seen him. Uh, and you research, you get any mixed reviews on ring adjustable antenna. That's not ring adjustable, buddy. That thing is automatic. Automatic tuning antenna. You put that thing up there, you are all bands, 6 meters through 75 meters. Um, it's RF sensitive, and that's what does it. Dustin, thanks for the follow. Jeremy, thanks for the share. Uh, bow fangs. I, you mean those? There, there, there's four of them right there. Like, <laughs> I've got bow fangs. Oh, yeah. I think every ham operator should have at least one. I mean, whether you use it or not, it's one thing, but, you know. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there you go. Use an ATOS 120 and aluminum boat and did some BOTA that was boat access only. There you go, man. Uh, Clint, how about a Comet, I think is what you're saying there. Comet makes some pretty good stuff, man. Comet makes really good stuff. Um, you know, so that's, yeah, Comet makes really good stuff. Uh, Brian, uh, what do I do for grounding in my shack? Well, one of those wires is a ground wire. I have a ground bus back here. Back there. And everything's grounded to that. And I've got an 8-foot ground rod outside of the wall. I'm in the basement, mind you. So, anyway, there's an 8-foot ground rod. The bottom of it's probably somewhere like, I don't know, down below the concrete there. Something like that. But, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's that's what I do for grounding. I ground everything. I don't mess around with any of that jazz. Everything's grounded. Um, use yours every day. KD6, Kilo Delta 6, Romeo Echo Lima, or KD6 REL 420, you're an old ham guy. Yeah, I love that old tube amp, boy. That has been a good amp. I've had it for a lot of years. I've been really nice to it, and it's it's just been a really good amplifier. I've used that thing in just about every band. It doesn't do 10, but I've used it all everywhere else, and it's it's worked really well. Uh, flashlight is handy on the bow thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Ham Radio 2.0. Yes, Clint, I do. I have ran across. In fact, I follow Ham Radio 2.0. I do watch some of his stuff. He's actually a really good one if you want to learn about Ham Radio. Um, you know, I, I, in fact, I, gotta, I need to collaborate with him. Um, I think I do. I think me and Ham Radio 2.0 should do a live on, on uh, Facebook sometime. Just because. Just because. I, I don't know why. I just think we should. I think it'd be fun. It'd be cool. Uh, he's got a lot of insight. And uh, I've got a lot of insight. And I think between the two of us, we could probably make a pretty good go of it there. But uh, for now, I just kind of sit here and do my own thing, you know. <laughs> so, that's, uh, that's what I do. I just sit here and uh, just play radio. I kind of want to... Ah, it's too cold out. I, as I say, I kind of want to go on a field trip here, but... I'm not going to do any field trips today. I'm in my jammy pants, and uh, and I ain't scared to admit it either. It's Sunday, boy. I ain't doing nothing. Well, I lied. I, I did do stuff today. I actually cleaned up the shack. I cleaned most of my house, which didn't take very long because we keep it fairly clean. And um, I actually went outside, and uh, Jim, you're put... Okay. <laughs> 
I actually went outside and cleared the snow off my truck because if I don't, then at 5.30 in the morning when I go to leave the house tomorrow, it's going to be completely frozen solid. So I got the snow off the truck. It's actually a really nice day outside. Um, but I'm in my slippers and my jammies, and I don't know that I want to uh, go outside when it's like 8 degrees. <laughs> it's pretty cold out there, man. But look at there, we got some QSL cards getting ready to go out again in the pile, like usual. And uh, I don't know, does anybody have an opinion on maybe I should run different switch boxes than these? Maybe I should just pull the trigger and just buy like two more of those. I don't know, I don't know where I'd mount two of them though. I know where I can mount one for sure because those Delta 2s are the same size as the Delta 4s, but I don't need... What I really need, maybe somebody knows what I really need here. Um, yeah, it's beautiful outside today too, Jim. I will say that. Um, yeah, it's really sunny out. It's just cold. Uh, Clint, we need kids. Ham radio in valve. You mean involved? Yeah. I got a 13-year-old boy upstairs, and he's he's talked on the radio, and he's been around it basically his whole life, and he just kind of... I don't know. Just not into it. Is what it is. I'm not going to force him. I would never do that. It was never forced on me. I just loved it. Um, Kilo Bravo Zero, Romeo Hotel Alpha. You're on QRZ. You finally got your dream station. I'll have to look you up, buddy. I have to write it down because I'm on my phone doing this live right now. Let me write you down here. Let's see. What am I doing here? So, Kilo, Kilo Bravo Zero... If I can make that better. Holy cow, I can't even write today. Good thing I'm not at work. Romeo Hotel Alpha. There we go. Okay. You're written down. So I'm going to do this. Make a little thing around it to remind me that when I'm done with this, I'm going to look you up. Right on. I'm glad you got your dream station, buddy. That is fantastic, Rich. That's that's just cool, man. Um, my dream station involves tremendous amounts of really big towers. And I don't have the land to do that anymore. So I it, that's, that's down the road. But anyway... <laughs> I don't even care about the radios that much. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd use that amp and that radio right there forever. I don't care. But really big towers and lots of antennas and, uh, you know, like 7 eighths hard line and, you know, like hundreds and hundreds of feet of it. And, oh, yeah, all the good stuff. Anyway, so what I'm asking here, instead of running two of these, all I really need in the pickup is a setup just like that. So the only reason I'm going to run these at all is because of the lightning for mobile. So I'm going to run it that way when I'm not talking on them. And so I'm going to have one for 2 meters and 70 centimeters for this radio right here. And then I'm going to have another one for that radio right there. But I'm only going to be running one antenna for both rigs. You know what I mean? One antenna for that rig, one antenna for that rig. So that antenna and that rig go together. And then the antenna that's already on the pickup is going to go with that radio. Um, so maybe, just maybe, somebody else has got a different idea of what I could do instead of having to run the, the switches like that. But if not, that's just what I'm going to run because, well, I need lightning protection, and that's really the only way to do it unless you want to take your antennas off every single time, and I really don't want to. Uh, Randy, thanks for the share. Love your setup, Ray from California. Thank you, Ray. I really appreciate that there, sir. NorCal Bandit, howdy! Whiskey Uniform 1, Quebec. This is Whiskey 7, Tango Victor Sierra. Out here in the town that holds your pants up called Belt, Montana. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Appreciate you being here. And, uh, yeah, I guess I should just get two more of these. Heck with it. I know they're good. They work. They have the arc plug in them that I can replace. If lightning gets too close, <sighs> they make me spend more money, aren't you? <laughs> That's all right. I spent more money yesterday because I was going to cannibalize them out. Jim, <laughs> you're killing me, buddy. <laughs> oh, I love it. Again, again. Now, there it is again. Delta 2, Delta 4, and I got another Delta 4 in the pickup. Apparently, Jim says do it. So, I guess, since just Junkyard Radio says do it, since I already have a HRO order that I placed last night, maybe we'll just bundle it all in one box. Anyway, I was going to cannibalize a mount that I had to make another mount for for that antenna right there. And, uh, well, 
<laughs> it didn't work out. We'll just say that. I looked at it, and I'm like, yeah, it's not going to work. So I had to order a different mount. And then it came to the thing where, you know, HRO, DX Engineering... Nobody likes to pay shipping, at least I don't, so you gotta hit a hundred bucks, so guess what happened? <laughs> yeah, we ordered a bunch more crap. I don't remember what I ordered. I'd have to go back on my HRO thing and look. But, uh, see, I know I ordered a mount, which was like 50 bucks, and then... I don't remember. I think I, think I ordered a separation cable, and now I actually looked, and I don't even need the separation cable, because I have one, and then... I ordered something else. I don't remember what it was. Yeah, I guess I'm going to have to go order me a couple more switches. Okay, well, we're going to do that today after I get done with this. Uh, you need help setting up your ham radio handhelds. What kind of handhelds do you got there, Doc Holiday? The Joking Gun, thank you for the follow. Doc Holiday, thank you for the follow. I appreciate that. Hello, Texas Mud. Thanks for coming in. So what kind of HTs do we have? Because if they're Bofangs, then I don't know. What do we got going here? What the hell? Okay, I don't know what the heck just happened there. I've never seen that pop up on my stuff at all. I don't know if I went away for a minute or not, but all of a sudden it had me verify that I'm actually still here. That was weird. Stupid TikTok. Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to have to go back on HRO's website here and spend some more money, I guess. That's all right. And I know, Jim, you like to spend money. I know you do. Oh, they're Bofangs? I don't know how to program Bofangs, man. I, I've had, I probably got, I don't know, six, eight, ten of them laying around in random places. And um, I've never, ever programmed one. Never. And the main reason I've never programmed one... Um, yeah, on the trail radio, OTTR, that's who I would look at, Doc Holiday. look him up, on the trail radio, he's probably the one that would know how to do it, good call there, Jim, that's awesome, thank you for that, um, yeah, he knows all about that stuff, but I've never programmed a Bofang, because the only thing I've ever used them for is either GMRS, or, which yes, I do have a license for that too, or, uh, just like talking simplex, like on 146.520 or something like that to a buddy. And that's it. I've never programmed them, so I don't know. I apologize there, buddy. Uh, Gozo, thanks for the follow. And anybody out there that uh, is interested in ham radio or is a ham radio operator, follow Just Junkyard Radio. You guys really need to do that. Just throwing that out there, too. He knows his stuff. He's pretty good. He's been doing this... Uh, probably longer than me. So, well, in fact, I know he's been doing it longer than me because I think... I'm pretty sure that he had his license before I was ever introduced to amateur radio. So, there you go. And we did show off some, or got a few more few more QSL cards here. I haven't even been getting that many of them. I certainly just need to start sending more out. But these are replies, is what those are. There's like five of them. Yeah, five cards are ready to go out. And, uh... But yeah, we're getting loaded up with cards. So, another one of my buddies, too, also, which I probably should move his card over here by Matt's, but AI7NC, I should probably move that one, too. But uh, that's another one of my buddies out of Eugene there. You got your ticket in 96. So, how many years ago was that? Let's see. 90, 30, 28. Yeah, it might have been right about then when I when I got introduced to it. So we're pretty close to the same time, give or take a little bit. Kilo India 5, Zulu India Foxtrot. Okay, I'll uh, let me write you down here, buddy. I'll look you up. Uh, let me plop back down on my chair. Write you down on my little pad of paper or my little piece of paper I got here. Where am I going here? Okay, Kilo India. Uh oh, Kilo India 5, India Foxtrot. There we go. Kilo India 5, India Foxtrot. That's... My writing's terrible, forgive me, but I can read it. That's all that matters. Had your ticket. 1992, original call was Kilo Bravo 8, Tango November Yankee. Right on. Um, some ham radios can take an EMP. The way these are set up, no. 
Not at all. Um, EMP happened, this station would be bye-bye. I don't know. Maybe not. I think it would be, though. But, yeah, who knows. That wouldn't be. That thing would probably work just fine. <laughs> but all the, the newer stuff, you know. You were introduced in 77. Yeah, you've been doing it longer than me there, Jim. That's for sure. How about the moon? What about the moon? What about the moon, sir? You talking like doing moon bounce? Like Earth, Moon, Earth, EME contacts? Yeah, I've never done it, but I've always thought it'd be cool to do. And people do it all the time. People have massive arrays for that stuff. TNY, totally nutty Yankee. <laughs> I love it. It looks like 20 meters are starting to pick up. This is a pretty good. Let's see what we got going here. There's some... Wow. This is hard for me to watch the phone and do this at the same time. Uh, 9 America, 1 America, 9A, 1A, yeah, I already talked to him. I can't remember where he's at, but I already talked to him today. He's got a big signal now. When I talked to him, he did not have a big signal. Let's see. See if we can make a good DX contact here. And if somebody, somebody may be on QRZ, because I'm using my phone to do my live. Let's see. Let's see here. Maybe somebody's on QRZ. Maybe you can. Maybe you can look this guy up for me here in a second. Fox Truck Juliet. Fo what? No, that ain't right. Who's United Whiskey Five Yankee? Let's get him. Whiskey Seven Tango Victor Sierra. Somebody can look him up. United Whiskey Five Yankee. Whiskey Seven Tango Victor Sierra. Sierra. Whiskey 7, Tango, Victor, Sierra. Uh, Victor, Sierra. Whiskey 7, Tango, Victor, Sierra. Uh, Whiskey 7, Echo, uh, Whiskey 7, Sanho, Victor, Sierra, 5 and 9, Kilowatt. Roger, Roger, 5 and 9, 5 and 9, Mike Tango, Mike Tango, QSL. Mike Tango, QSL, United Whiskey 5. There we go, and that's how it's done. So if somebody can look him up and tell me where the heck he's at. That would be awesome. United Whiskey 5 Yankee. Uniform Whiskey 5 Yankee. Can some, Jim, can you look that up real quick for me and tell me where that guy is? I can't log anything. I'm on my darn phone here right now. I don't have my tablet down here either. Whatever country that is, I'm just curious. If not, no big deal. Oh, you're at the gas pump. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Anyway, that's a DX contact somewhere. I don't know where the U call sign would come from, but... Anyway, you, unite, uh, Uniform Whiskey 5 Yankee. Uniform Whiskey 5 Yankee. I don't know where the heck he's from. I'm just curious. I probably should log him, but I probably actually will. I'm going to write him down. But I can't do anything because i got to log on my phone. Oh, it's Ukraine. Okay. Well, there you go. So we just made a good contact in Ukraine. That's, that's cool. Uniform Whiskey. Five Yankee, we'll call it. One o'clock. So we'll call it 7 o'clock UTC. Because I'm 6 hours behind. 7 hours behind. So we're going to call it 8 o'clock UTC. Yeah. Okay. Do you need a call sign for QRZ? Uh, 
You know, I don't remember. I think you do. I think you got to have a call sign. To be, you can sign up, though. You can go to QRZ.com and sign up. Um, you can do that. So, that guy was in Ukraine. Okay? Ukraine is way over here. So, we are way over here. Now, there's Montana. There's We'll call it Great Falls. We'll call it, that's where I'm at. I'm actually, like, southeast of Great Falls. But, if you look at that, and then you come clear over here into Europe, there's Ukraine. And that's where I just talked to that guy at. That's a pretty long shot. That's on the other side of the planet there, people. But, uh, anyway, yeah, that's cool. That's amateur radio right there. Thanks for the share. I appreciate it. But that's part of the fun right there. And to be to be completely honest, there's a what they call a contest going on right now. It's a it's a DX contest. So there's a lot of people, some really big antennas, and some pretty good power pointing, beaming toward the United States right now. It's not always like that, but conditions are pretty good too. So. You know, there is that part of it. But that's what I was saying earlier. I was talking all over in Europe earlier this morning and yesterday. Um, that's why I didn't do my live last night because I just, the band was so crowded. Yeah, right over the North Pole, man. So, freaking cool. But uh, that's why I have this map up here. I love it, man. I, I, I can come over here and be like, okay, well, I'm there and this guy's way over here or way down there or way down there or, you know, clear down here or whatever, you know. I know I got my wife's got my fancy shirt that she got for me. She just thinks this is the best thing that she's ever hung in my radio room. <laughs> anyway, I said, Well, you know, you're really in the way of my map, but that's all right. But uh, yeah, she's covered up New Zealand down there. That's rude. That's not very nice. Poor old New Zealand down there being covered up by a shirt. Oh, well, sorry about the hair. We got dogs and cats, so that's how that works. But, uh, anyway, there you go. So that's kind of the deal. That's amateur radio right there in a nutshell. There's my boxes. Sorry about my mess. I actually cleaned some of this stuff up earlier today. There's, I had a big pile of boxes and crap. I had to get rid of them. Don't mind my mess over there either. We'll get to that eventually. This is my little man cave down here. I just kind of do my own thing. So, you know, I got my dog. Mr. Mr. Needs a haircut down there. We're waiting for the weather to get a little warmer before we give him a haircut. That's one of my shack dogs. He's a good boy. And my other one is not in here, so. But Otis is a good dog. Yeah, he's a good boy. Yeah, he's a good boy. They hang out with me most of the time. But anyway, that's about all I got for today, guys. Unless somebody else has some questions or anything like that. Um, yeah, you know, we just got stuff going on. Um, you know, I mean, what the heck? I'm thinking about doing like a giveaway or something. I'm not quite sure what I should do or how I should do it. But I am thinking about doing some kind of giveaway. And I don't know. I'll probably end up giving away like a Bofang or something like that. Um Maybe we'll do it at belt stock. Maybe that's what we'll do. Maybe we'll have a giveaway on a live on TikTok at belt stock. Maybe that's what we'll do. Giveaway radio. I mean, what the heck? You know? I don't know what we'll come up with, but we'll have to do something. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, like I said, I don't know. I don't think I have an awful lot more for today. Uh, looks like people are kind of dropping out of the live here a little bit. So I think I'm going to say 73. Thanks for coming in, Art. Appreciate you guys. We're just kind of playing ham radio. I'm probably going to leave this on for a little while longer, and I'm probably going to end up shutting the radios off too. And it uh, looks like my stepdaughter is trying to get a hold of me on Facebook now too. So probably got to get back to her on that. But uh Anyway, all right, guys. Well, I really appreciate you coming in. Hope everybody had a good day. I hope you guys, uh, thanks for hanging out. I hope you guys learned a little something maybe, hopefully. 
Uh, if you have any questions on anything, said get me on YouTube. Uh, my call sign, which is W7TVS, first name of Travis. So W7TVS Travis, all one word, all capital letters. Find me on my YouTube, links in my bio. Check it out. Uh, so you can get a hold of me on here. If you're one of my personal friends, you got one my phone number, you can get a hold of me that way as usual. Drew Drew, thank you for the follow. And um, anyway, there we go. But uh, said questions, comments, concerns, anything of that nature. Um, yeah, just uh, just shoot me a message. I'm more than happy to answer questions to the best of my ability out here. You know, if you got a questions about licensing or you're going, man, I got this stuff set up and it's doing this. I don't know what the heck to do. Spec, thanks for the follow. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate it there, buddy. Um, you know, anything like that. Man, I, I'm, I'm willing to help out the best of my ability. I don't know everything. I'll never claim to be, you know, the world's best amateur radio operator who knows how to do everything because I don't. I am well-versed in it. But the learning never stops. And I still got lots of stuff to learn and probably always will to the day I die. So as far as radio goes and everything else in general. So what the heck. But uh, anyway, uh, I guess my uh, my whole thing for the day here is get your license. That's when the learning starts. You got to learn a little bit. But uh, OBS 94, come to Beltstock, buddy. It's at the end of August. We'll get a little more into that as time gets a little bit closer. Um, it's, what is it, third Saturday in August, I do believe, this year. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. Kyle, thanks for the follow. Thanks for coming in. And uh, But, yeah, man, come on to Beltstock. We're going to do some activations. Um, we're going to be giving out some QSL cards. I think we're still kind of in the process of that, but I'm, I'm thinking we're probably going to use... Oh, stupid glare. That call sign right there, W7MOB. That's my club call. I actually own that call sign there to the FCC as well. Um, it's a club call. Microphone the brothers. And uh, we're going to be getting some QSL cards made up. I'm thinking we're probably going to do 250 of them. I'm thinking, because that seems to be the most economical. Like, and my guy likes to do them in bundles of 250. And I think once they're gone, they're gone. And I think we're going to do some activations down here at the park and belt while belt stock's going on, probably during the day. And then in the evening time, we're probably going to rock out to the concert and have a good time. And it looks like we're probably going to hang out because we're gaining some more people back in here. So uh, anyway, belt stock's going to be a good time. And yeah, just before your birthday, man, it'll be awesome. You get out here, and even if you don't have your license, the cool part, the cool part about running a club call sign like that or just being at an operator station. So if you didn't have a license, like my son, who's 13 years old, who's upstairs right now, probably playing video games or something crazy. If he wanted to, if he wanted to sit down here and work pileups, he can do it. But every 10 minutes, I have to, he has to sign or I have to sign with my call sign and say third-party control. But he can do it. He can sit right here in the operator, right here, and have this boom Right here in his face, just like that. Like, that's how I see it, right there. That's that's what I'm looking at when I'm working pileups. Maybe it doesn't look that close, but that's what I'm looking at when I'm working pileups, more or less. So I got my radio right there, and I got my microphone right there in my face. So my 13-year-old boy can literally sit here and work pileups if he wanted to, it, with my call sign, as long as I'm here and doing third-party control. So um, feel free to come, man. Belt stock's going to be a good time. Like I said, even if you don't... Uh, even if you don't have your license yet, you can still operate, buddy. This should be no problem, especially with the W7MOB call sign. Uh, Drew, Drew, if you have a commercial license, it does not transfer to anything amateur. No, it is a different license, sir. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we're getting quite a few people in here again. I think we're going to hang for a little while. But uh, So that's cool. Let's see. We had a contact to Ukraine earlier. We could probably make another contact if we really wanted to, but uh, I don't know. Give me a minute, we'll see. No, I'm out of water, that's great. Oh, that's all right, because I emptied my garbage pail. There. <laughs> anyway. But uh, what frequency currently I am on 14.237.8, uh, also on 146740, and scanning a bunch of other 2 meter, 70 centimeter frequencies. Um, that's currently where I'm at. Fresh pants, yep. Thanks for coming in, buddy. Rock and roll mine joined. Hello. Michelle Fulbright, thank you for coming in. Cody Beavers, thank you guys for coming in. 
I appreciate you guys being here and checking this out. There's some amateur radio stuff going on today. Thanks for the likes. Appreciate the follows. All that stuff out there. Anyway, a homemade bench that I built here, just so you guys know. Um, that's a club I'm part of right there. Northwest Country Cousins. That's cool. That's a 75 meter deal. Um, do I have D-Star? Well, there's that. So, yeah, I will. <laughs> Once I get it hooked up, that would be that's the only D Star radio I've ever owned right there. But yeah, we're gonna have D Star absolutely. So it'll be mobile. It's gonna be in the pickup. It will not be here at the house. Radio Mercy, hello. Thank you for coming in. But uh, yeah, so there's there's D Star right there. Absolutely. And I almost got the cheaper version. What is it, the twenty three hundred or something like that? And I went nah. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. But one thing I will say is I did not realize how big. The face of that radio is. I'm going, well, I don't know where I'm going to mount that, but we're going to figure it out. That's all right, buddy. Hey, appreciate you coming in. You guys check him out. Radio Mercy, Kilo Echo Zero, Romeo Mike. Give him a follow. He does some pretty cool stuff with amateur radio, too. He did. Uh, he, w he had a pretty good live earlier, making a bunch of contacts on 10 meters and stuff during this DX contest. So give him a follow, too. He, uh, he does some awesome stuff. Thanks for the likes, buddy. I appreciate you. He's another good creator out here on TikTok. Um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, if you guys, uh, you know, you guys looking for for good creators with good content, give you a little bit of education and different, because uh, all of us do a little bit different things. Um, hello there, Scar Tiger. Thanks for coming in. Uh, all of us do a little bit different stuff. And, you know, like, I like to do a lot of this Q&A stuff, just kind of mess around here. Sometimes, so usually on Saturday evenings, I'll sit here and I'll, I, I work, I start pile-ups, and I work pile-ups on 20 meters, typically. But, like I said, I didn't do it last night because of the DX contest was going on, and I just figured, let's leave them alone. We'll do it again next week. Uh, let's see here. Derek, De Derek, you got some handheld Yesus. What's a good beginner book to learn how to use them correctly? Well, um... Do you have a, a ham radio license, Derek? I guess that's my... I'm going to ask the question with a question. Not to be rude, but I just need to know. Because that will let me... You, that will enable me to answer your, your initial question there, sir. But, um... Thank you, Rick Neal, for coming in. Appreciate you. Thank you for the follow. I really appreciate that. Anyway, I guess, so Derek, I mean, if you have your amateur radio license, that's your first step. You've already got that part out of the way. If not, I would highly suggest getting it. Um, so, be, uh, beginner's book to learn how to use the radios. That's kind of a loaded one because so many radios are different, especially when it comes to like Yesus, Icoms, Kenwoods. They all do different things and run differently, and menu options are different. Um, some you got to use a computer to program, others you don't. Um, but really it depends what you're trying to do with them. I mean, if you're trying to talk, you know, on two meters on simplex, um, you know, I don't know, man, there's a lot of different, a lot of different things that go into that. So it's kind of one of them things, buddy. Now uh, you had a ham license back in the nineties. You were whiskey Bravo nine echo hotel Oscar. My buddy now looked me up and said it doesn't exist. Well, if you were back in the nineties, yeah, it's, it's long gone, man. They're only good for 10 years. So. Um, I would suggest probably retesting, getting your license, uh, at least start out with tech, and uh, looking for if the world falls, falls apart, to go the di longest distance without repeaters, well, handhelds aren't going to be the, the key. Um, I would probably tune some simplex frequencies if they're two meter radios. I'd probably get like 146.520, I'd probably put that in there, um, 146.440. Uh, any of those simplex frequencies, I'd probably put those in there. GMRS frequencies are on the 460 megahertz if they're UHF. I'd probably run some of those frequencies in there too. Um, the other thing, it's just for to throw it out there, uh, something that's not bad to have around. And as you can see, I don't have anything hooked up, but a CB radio is not a bad thing to have around. We were kind of going back and forth that last month at my club meeting too, and they're saying, I don't need no CB radio. And I said, well, wait a minute. I said, I've got them. I've got two or three of them. Um, like this radio will actually go to the CB frequencies, but, you know, that's about as far as that goes. It's not legally allowed to transmit there. 
But uh, it's good to have because if, if you're in a, uh, what do you call it, uh, SHTF, you know, uh, blank hits the fan there type of situation, a lot of people have CB radios. Um, and there's nothing wrong with having it. Now, I can have a CB station set up in about 10 minutes. If I really, if, if, if we were in an SHTF situation, I would have, I would literally have a CB radio set up in about 10 minutes. Uh, I think the contest is over or is going to be over very shortly. I'm pretty sure it might still be going there. Fresh Prince. I'm not sure. But anyway, it's good to have a CB set up because a lot of people have them set up already, especially if you're hunters or, um, you know, people have off-road rigs, stuff like that. But a lot of good things to check out are GMRS, especially for people that don't really want to test for amateur radio. If you want to use radio for different things, uh, GMRS license, there is no test for it um, unless you're just junkyard radio and fail the test. Hi, hi. But <laughs> um, that was a joke. Anyway, there's no test for it. And uh, you go in there and you pay them the 35 bucks and you apply for it. And what is it, about two, I thought 21 days, like everything else of the government, uh, you'll have your license issued to you and you're good for 10 years on it. Um, and you get, you know, you're, you can get some GMRS stuff, GMRS stuff set up. There's repeaters and stuff in the air too. Um, yeah, some of them are linked. I know a couple guys as repeaters. There's none around here, not where I live. But, uh, yeah, and the 148 GTLs were really bad to the bone radios. Um, I will say that. I have an old Unity Grant. Same board, just different style of radio on the outside. Killer, killer radio. I've had it for a long, long, long time. That's the first transceiver I actually ever owned in my life when I was a kid. Uh, Fresh Prince, what state are you in, man? Just curious. If you don't want to tell me, that's cool, too. I'm okay with that. Oh, you're in Maine? Okay. Right on. It's over there on the East Coast. Well, good deal. Your battery's dying. Yeah, mine, too. It's getting there. That's all right, Jim. I appreciate you being in here, buddy. I know you're out running errands and such. But uh, you're on 14237.8 now listening. Candy Mark, Hello what's there i don't know i got I had noise i got jack oh are you trying to hear me is that what you're trying to do if you're trying to hear me go to like 14 230 i don't even like that frequency hang on well yeah the contest is obviously still going and hear things going here let's see If you want to try to hear me, go to 14.263, as long as you're not hearing any uh, anything crazy. Let me know when you're there. There's a little bit of stuff close by, but we can do something real quick. Shouldn't be a big deal. You're there? All right, let's see if you can hear me. I bet you can. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know how good conditions are over there today. Whiskey 7, Tango, Victor, Sierra. Now, let's see. Did you hear me? I mean, I threw like a thousand watts at you there, so I don't know. Looks like we got people on either side of us there, too, so I don't want to be messing them up. What do we got here? Didn't hear much, yeah. Conditions are in on 20 today. That's all right. It's during the day. What are you going to do, you know? Kind of one of those things, but... Yeah, that tape major there. By the way, if you need a good phone stand to prop in front of your radio, Stanley Fat Max, baby. That's right. Uh, my call sign is Whiskey 7 Tango Victor Sierra. That's my call sign. But I, I can't. 20 meters is not that great today. It was pretty good earlier. And then it kind of went kaput on me here. and I don't know. Not that great. But anyway. 
All right, everybody. Well, I think I'm going to get the heck off here. I've been out here for about an hour and a half or so, and uh, I think I'm going to shut her down. What was that? Hang on. Now nah, there's somebody out there. I can't even hear him. Yeah, it is what it is. So, look at that little dog. Little dog. Anyway, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to get the heck out of here. I've been here for right about an hour and a half. So, I'm going to upload this whole thing. Um, yeah, on the trail radio. Doc Holiday, on the trail radio. Um, OTTR. Yeah, that's that's who he is, man. He's uh, really good with uh, GMRS stuff, the Bofang stuff. Um, really good. Probably one of the best guys I've seen on TikTok. Probably the best guy I've seen on TikTok doing that kind of stuff. So, uh, on the trail radio. Look him up. OTTR. Uh, he's awesome. He's really good. So, yeah. He's a great one to follow, too. But uh, anyway, appreciate you guys. I am going to get the heck out of here. Yeah, Doc, no problem, buddy. I appreciate you being in here. And uh, we'll catch you around the coax, man. I, I do appreciate you. So anyway, hope everybody has a wonderful day. And we'll probably catch you next week. Candy Mark, absolutely. Thank you for being here. And um, so next Saturday evening around 5 o'clock Mountain Time, which is where I'm at, I usually start uh, working pile-ups live. Uh, I start usually on 20 meters, and I usually go live on TikTok here. Um, thanks for the follow, Candy Mark. And uh, so anyway, tune in for that. I also upload all that stuff to YouTube. You guys follow me on YouTube, W7TBS Travis. All capital letters, all one word. The link's in my bio. Check it out. Um, and then, of course, on Sundays, I do this stuff for an hour and a half to two hours, typically. And uh, Dave T., thanks for the follow. Anyway... All radio most of the time, so there you go. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out of here. I hope everybody has a wonderful rest of your weekend and a good work week coming up. And we'll catch you guys down the coax another time. 73, everybody, this is Whiskey 7, Tango, Victor, Sierra, out here in the town that holds your pants up called Belt, Montana. 73.